we're being asked to trust pharma when 80% of the American people, their bodies are like rebelling against them um, with obesity, which are clearly a sign of, of underlying issues where Ozempic and daily, you know, weekly shots is not the root cause. This, this just on its face doesn't make sense. And then you trace the corruptions. Again, Ozempic is paying off everyone. They are one of the five largest funders, the company itself, one of the five largest funders of news ads, one of the you know, top research funders of obesity research, largest funders to university on the obesity topic. And, and the thing I, you know, kind of, kind of ram home here, Tucker, is you just have to look where the money is. So if you actually look at the analyst reports that are propping up these stocks, they're assuming an increase in obesity. So you talk about all the, like the Novo Nordisk's largest company uh, in Europe. They literally, in, in the, where the money hits the road, where people are investing billions of dollars, they're assuming increased rates of obesity over the next 10 years in America. You actually, I was talking to a, a doctor at Harvard, uh, they, you know, they're underwriting a loan for a new obesity center where they can, where they can treat an issue as infant. Those loans have projections for growth of obesity. They're not projecting that increased ozempic is going to decrease obesity. The loans that are underpinning these medical centers, and you go to any, any city in the country, the biggest, most beautiful building is, is you know, some kind of new pediatric you know, obesity center or cardiology center. Um, the, the loans assume increased rates of conditions. So fundamentally, we have the largest industry in the country, healthcare, not asking Imagine the leader saying, how do we reverse obesity? How do we cure obesity? They're not asking that. They're saying, how can we actually say obesity is not your fault? Oprah, who's involved with Weight Watchers, just apologized for preaching personal accountability over the past decades. She said, it's not personal accountability. We're supporting Ozempic. This is becoming, obesity is becoming something. Do you think Oprah got paid? She's highly involved with Weight Watchers. Yeah, Weight Watchers has shifted from a personal accountability organization that it's been um, preaching for decades and is now a prescriber of Ozempic. They've totally changed because Ozempic is a better business model because you never go off of it. This is insane. So maybe one of the reasons this is um, accepted, people don't see it as totally crazy as I do. I don't take Advil, so I, all of this seems crazy to me. But the average say 65 year old person in this country right. is on how many drugs? The, uh, about, about seven. Seven. Yeah. And not just intermittently, but like over chronic. years. Chronic. 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 Uh, 90, 90 plus uh, percent of funding for medicine dollars is around chronic lifetime. So it's more recurring revenue. So d describe what that looks like, like the scale of it. Yeah. I think, I think again, we're so desensitized to this. We don't understand how crazy, That's right. how much of a failure it's been. Well, I'll give you an example of my mom. So my mom was 71 and went, you know, for a checkup and was told uh, by the doctor she was healthy. And she was actually at the time on seven um, lifetime medications. So she was on, you know, maybe a decade before, had high cholesterol, was prescribed a statin. And the message from the doctor was, no problem. Most, you know, the majority almost of people your age are on a statin. No problem. That's a rite of passage. Then she had high fasting glucose. Again, that's that's basically prediabetes, which majority of people have. Metformin, one of the most prescribed drugs in the country, high blood pressure. So she has these comorbidities that are almost seen as like rites of passage. You know, it's it's a rite of passage for for a man over forty to be on a statin. The majority are. Um, so so these were all kind of normal things. So as we've treated everything in silos, that's a lie. Heart disease, diabetes, in many ways, depression, Alzheimer's. The, the, they're, they're branches of the same tree. They're, they're, they, we've actually lied uh, saying those are different conditions, seeing four different doctors for four different treatments that don't even talk to each other. So we're, we're, we're managing the symptoms instead of seeing those symptoms as a gift and realizing that we have a root cause metabolic crisis. That's why the more stands we prescribe, the more heart disease goes up. The more metformin we prescribe, the more diabetes goes up, the more SSRIs we prescribe, which are now 25% of women. The higher the suicide rate goes. We're, we're seeing skyrocket. So, so we're siloing everything. And literally- Wait, wait I'm, so there's so many questions. Yeah. So 25% of women are on SSRIs? We have a societal dynamic where 25% of women in the United States are on a medication. And I'm not just flatly anti-drug, but this is a societal dynamic, Tucker. We have 25% of women taking something that fundamentally numbs you out from reality. Um, and, and we don't even blink an eye at that. And depression, mental health disorders, anxiety, suicide. Suicide is now the second leading cause of death 
for young adults, um, SSRIs are the- after drug after drug abuse. Yeah, uh, and uh, which which I think could be related. And um, SSRIs, you talk to any high schooler now and, and look in there, it's the first line of defense. I mean, it is prescribed like candy when it- to children. Oh, yes, SSRIs. Oh, oh, SSRI prescription rates are skyrocketing among teens. You talk to any high school counselor, any, anyone at any high school, this is the first line of defense when a I child- I would never talk to a high school counselor under yeah. any circumstances. Yeah, well, that's but. that's very smart. Um, but um, yeah, they're, they're skyrocketing among kids and there's actually a black box warning on uh, SSRI's label actually saying that it increases suicidal ideation among children and they're widely prescribed to children, not to mention the fact that 20% of high school seniors are on essentially methamphetamines, Adderall, uh, which if you read the book Blitzed, um, actually uh, traces the history. It was Adderall was developed by Nazi Germany as a tool for Nazi soldiers to be more aggressive, and now yes. is prescribed uh, widely along with SSRIs to to kids. Oh, um, w one thing I'm trying to keep track of everything yeah. you're saying, uh, all of which is checkable. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume on the internet. Um, statin drugs are prescribed to the majority of American men over forty. Uh, the that? last rate, I think, I think 2019, uh, the last study I said was 45%. And I think there's reports that now post COVID it's, 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 it's close to 50%. So what's the downside of statin drugs? Oh, there's wild research coming out. I mean, the high, the highest level, just even if the drugs don't have no side effects, heart disease, isn't a statin deficiency. What statins to me at the most important level represent that we have a moral hazard, right? Fundamentally, when you're prescribed that statin you're told by the doctor that you're doing something. When you're prescribed the Ozempic, the doctor, Fatima Stanford on 60 Minutes, who's you know paid off doctor from Ozempic said, throw willpower out the window. This is a brain disease. Food isn't the problem. It, it, it's a medical issue. Take Ozempic. Do not worry about what you're eating. This is exactly what Purdue Pharma said about pain. Yeah, so, 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 you have, so you have these messages. You have the statins. You're doing something. You now can eat what you want to eat. You, you wouldn't even believe this, but in until uh, 2018, and Dr. Robert Lustig, who's a hero of mine, has pointed this out, an endocrinologist at uh, UCSF, the American Diabetes Association said that as long as you take your medications, you do not need to change your diet as a diabetic. So you literally have guidance from the American Heart Association, from the American Diabetes Association, now from the obesity industrial complex, saying that if you take these drugs, you, you, you're good. But that's a lie because there's never been a drug in American history for a chronic condition that has lowered the rate of that chronic condition.